Hey, what's up everybody? It's Mark Ellert here and thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm going to talk to you about restless leg syndrome. Restless leg syndrome, it is a central nervous system disorder and it's something that has been driving me nuts for about 15 years. Actually, correction. So it's something I've been dealing with for like 15 years. The first 10 years of it was driving me completely nuts. But the last five years, I'm actually, I'm managing it pretty well because I, I discovered what it is. I figured out what restless leg is and I found a way to treat it. So I've been managing it well. That's why I'm making this video today, everyone. Anybody out there, if you recognize some of these symptoms, if you can relate to this, I wanna help you understand restless leg. I'm gonna help you adopt a treatment plan so you can have some relief and you can get some good sleep at night. So that's the thing, everyone. Restless leg syndrome, it mostly affects people at night, the late evening and when you're trying to sleep. Some people get it during the day. I occasionally experience it during the daytime, but mostly it's in the evening, especially when I'm laying down trying to sleep. So everyone, restless leg syndrome, the symptoms basically, the symptoms are brutal. It's when you're laying down trying to sleep or in the evening when you're sitting, you just all of a sudden get this, this strange urge, this strange sensation in your leg, like a tickle. It's like a tickling impulse that you have to move your leg, whether you want to or not. It's like, ah, something's going on. I got to kick my leg this way. It's a very strange impulse. It's like this deep internal feeling, like a tickle, like, eh, eh, eh. Like it's just tickling. Someone's tickling you and the pressure's building up and you after a minute, you, ah, you have to just move your leg. You can't take it. It's this deep internal twitch. It's like, it's very similar to the feeling of someone like strapped battery cables to your leg and they have like a car battery hooked up to it. And it start, at first they start with really low voltage. They're just sending like this small electrical pulse through your leg where you're like, eh? It's got like this, this buildup pressure where it's internal. It feels like it's pulsing through your, through your muscle and your muscle just has to just like burst, just like jolt. It's because over time it feels like they're cranking up the voltage. It feels like they're turning up the volt and they're like <laughs> zapping you with the battery. It literally feels like the electrical is just building up in your leg. And it's after you don't move your leg, it's just going to burst. It's just this pressure that's building and you have to kick your leg and move it. And you're like, ah, the second you move it, it's just this automatic instantaneous just relief. It's just like, oh, okay, there we go. That feels good. That's awesome. It's just, it's a weird internal like electrical just twitch, like a, like a, a tickle that's just building up where you just have to kick your leg and then it just, ah, it's just, it's just so relieving. 30 seconds later, it starts all over again. The exact same thing starts all over again. The second you kick your leg and you get that relief, you're fine. Then you have the same sensation starting to build up. It starts slowly and then just starts building up and you kick your leg and it's just, it can, it can perpetuate and it gets worse and worse, people. It's something for a long time I lost a lot of sleep and because I didn't get it, I was, I was losing my mind. I was really irritated by it and just couldn't wrap my head around it. So I lost a lot of sleep. But I figured out what it is, everyone. I figured out what it is and I've learned how to treat it to help myself. Because not only does it start in just one leg, it can go to all of your appendages. Basically because it's a central nervous system disorder, it can go anywhere. Mostly it's primarily in the legs and sometimes I mostly get it in my right leg, but it also goes to the left leg. Sometimes when I'll get it for an hour or two, my right leg and it stops, ah, then it'll move to the left leg and it starts to my left leg. And it's like, you gotta be kidding me. Sometimes it even moves into my arms. I get the same, same sensation in my arms and hands. And it drives me nuts. It keeps me awake. But everyone, it's a central nervous system disorder. Your central nervous system is basically like an electrical graph. It's like, it's like an electrical system. Your central nervous system is 24 seven, always sending a signal and sending an impulse to every appendage of your body. It's talking to your body 24 seven. So when you have to move your appendages, when you have to do something, your central nervous system is what's sending the signal to do that. It's also, if you're in pain, if you're hurting, your body wants to know. So the, 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 your central nervous system is always communicating with everything. So it's basically, it's like, like I said, it's like an electrical chart. It's like an electrical system where there's always a signal being sent to everything and there's a signal being sent back. So there's communication. So your body knows what's going on with everything. So if you're hurting or something's falling asleep, you know to move it. You know, you know to put your hand out of the fire because it doesn't feel good. Your central nervous system is getting a signal. Something's wrong. 
So with restless leg, what's happening is your central nervous system stops communicating with the appendage. It's basically your central nervous system is not getting a signal from your leg. So it's basically sending an impulse like, hey, hey, talk to me, talk to me. Are you okay? What's going on, buddy? Are you alive? It's just sending a strong electrical impulse to hopefully receive a signal back from your leg. It just doesn't know if you need to move your leg, if your leg's hurting, if it's on fire. Your central nervous system is not getting a signal from your leg. It's not communicating. It doesn't know what's happening. So it wants to know it just bam it sends that signal so that's why it's that twitch it's that feeling of you can't stop it and that's why even when you uh when you move and you get that relief it happens all over again because when you move your leg after you move it it still stops and it's not getting that signal so it still needs it it still needs to receive the signal so everyone a lot of things that i've learned how to treat and help this because you're not getting a good signal something that helps a lot is stretching I've actually noticed rather than just kicking your leg and just laying there and then kicking it again, that doesn't help. It's just going to perpetuate and just keep happening. One thing that helps is stretching. When you stretch, you're getting a lot of good blood flow to the muscle, so you get a lot of good communication. You get some oxygen. It frees up the communication and really makes it easier for your leg to communicate. So a lot of the stretching I do is the classic pike. You stick your leg out and you, you stretch all the way forward like that a few times. Another good one is I pull my knee up into my chest and I pull up my, can't do it too well today. I got my tight pants on, you know, <laughs> wearing my sexy pants, everybody. But you, you, you pull the, the, the knee up into your leg or pull your knee into leg, pull your knee up into your chest and stretch that. Another good one is you can pull the calf, do this one, stretch this guy out. So I do, I do all of that stretching quite a bit and that helps relief a lot. Usually when I do that stretching, it will stop. And so when I'm getting symptoms and I do that stretching, it usually helps and it'll stop. If it moves to the other leg, I'll just do stretching. If it moves to my arm, I'll just do some stretching and make sure I stretch it out to get some good communication. And after I stretch, it usually stops. If it moves to another appendage, then I'll just do stretching. And even after I stretch a lot, if it keeps happening, something that helps too is I'll get up out of bed. I'll get up out of bed and I'll walk around for a little bit, do some stretching, and then lay back down and try to sleep. Because it's basically it's just, it's losing communication. So it needs to communicate. And that happens a lot while you're laying down. While you're laying down and putting your body weight on your back, it's actually cutting off some of the circulation and cutting off some of the communication to your spine. So that's a lot of it, especially when you're sleeping on your back. When you're laying flat, sleeping on your back, that's a big, big um, thing that, that uh, contributes to restless leg. It's good to roll over to your side or sleep on your stomach or something. Sleeping on your back can really affect it. One thing, too, that helps a lot, everyone, is potassium. So potassium is basically like the vitamin of the central nervous system. It helps really, really, really help the communication quite a bit. So it's good to introduce foods that have high potassium into your diet, like bananas. Bananas have a lot of potassium. That's a good one. And so do potatoes. Potatoes are a good one to introduce in your diet. And also, before bed, like 15 minutes before bed, I pop a potassium chewable tablet. Potassium chewable tablets really help 15 minutes before bed. It's just right in time to get into your gut and to metabolize. And they also have medications. I'm recently talking to my psychiatrist about it. There are medications for restless leg syndrome that can be able to help quite a bit. Um, and it's something I've been dealing with like for 15 years. I found foods that help. I found, you know, vitamins like potassium that help and my stretching. But sometimes even with all of that, with all my stretching and everything, it still really drives me nuts and I lose a lot of sleep. So I'm really thinking about introducing, uh, introducing this, uh, this medication into my diet. Because also, everyone, some more things that can really, really affect restless leg syndrome is uh, some things that you don't want to introduce to your diet. Some things in your diet that can really make restless leg worse is chocolate. Chocolate has a big effect on restless leg syndrome. So before bed, when you're trying to get some sleep and you're eating your comfort food, <laughs> yum, 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 yum. when you're eating your chocolate before bed, chocolate can affect your restless leg. And there's also some sugar in it, so that can keep you up. Another one is alcohol. Alcohol can definitely affect your restless leg syndrome and make it a lot worse. Another one is coffee. Coffee and caffeine can really make your restless leg worse. But if you're drinking coffee and caffeine before bed anyway, I don't think you, you should be worrying so much about your restless leg syndrome keeping you up. I mean, that's, hey, I mean, to each their own. Do your thing. Drink your coffee if that's your go-to. But that can really, really affect your restless leg syndrome. Other things that affect it, everyone, is mental health. 
So I've recently done some research and figured it out. This is why I'm going to talk to my psychiatrist about introducing the medication is because around this time of year, my restless leg is really bad. My restless leg's real bad lately because of the time of year with my birthday approaching, the anniversary for my brain injury fast approaching. There's some anniversaries that hold some weight that have some issues with me. It's very natural and very normal for me to do a lot of ruminating, a lot of reflecting about my life at this time of year. It's, it's very easy for me to at night be up thinking about some stuff I don't want to that I feel is unsettled and I'm still uneasy about. That can affect your restless leg a lot. I did a lot of research. That's one thing mentally and emotionally. When you're thinking about things that you feel are unresolved, when you're thinking about things that you're uneasy about, that you want resolution for, that can really affect your restless leg. That can, that can make it worse, everyone. But everyone, with all this in mind, there's lots of options. First of all, it's good to know. It's awesome to understand and know what restless leg syndrome is and to make sense out of it. For a long time, I couldn't make sense out of it. I was losing my mind. It kept me up a lot. So it was nice to, to have that control and understand what restless leg is. And it's awesome to adopt a treatment plan. Whatever works for you. You know, do your stretching, not with your tight pants, but yeah, do your stretching, change your diet, everyone, and help yourself out, everyone. I can do it. You can do it, everyone. Until next time, keep it sexy, keep your pants on, <laughs> make the choices. I'll catch you on the flip side.